All right, this is uh, the 2014 AP Physics B exam, and we are looking at number five, which is going to primarily be a uh, an EM problem, electromagnetic induction style problem. What we've got here is uh, oh a bunch of information, but more or less we have a rod here with springs holding an equilibrium. And then we turn a battery on, or we connect a battery here, and the the rod will drop down. It's going to oscillate and eventually come into equilibrium. And so A wants to know, is point P or point Q the positive terminal? For this, you're going to use your right-hand rules. I'm going to go ahead and use the right-hand rules in which I teach, which is going to be right-hand rule number two, in which I treat, uh, I position my thumb, my pointer finger, and my remaining fingers all at 90 degrees to each other. And my thumb is going to represent the force acting on the current carrying wire or the rod. My index finger is going to represent the current flowing through it. And my remaining finger is going to point in the direction of the magnetic field. Now, you may learn other right hand rules. As long as they're 90 degrees to each other, you're going to get the same result. So I look at my magnetic field here. And I see in this problem, the magnetic field is directed into the page. Remember, X's mean into the page, dots mean out of the page. So I'm going to take my fingers, my remaining fingers, and I'm going to push them into the page. And I'm going to have my thumb point straight down, because that's the direction of the force acting on the rod. I know it was down, because it stretched downward. That'll leave my index finger uh, pointed to the left at that location. So that indicates that at that spot, I have current that's to the left. If current's going to the left, then that must mean Q is my positive terminal because, by definition, conventional current is positive flow to negative flow. Justify it however you want, similar to what I just said. On the dot, we want to write a free body diagram. We want to indicate the forces acting on this rod at that spot. Well, hopefully you don't forget your original forces that were there. You have your weight, which is down. Mg, or F sub G, is fine. You're also going to have the magnetic force, which is down, or else the rod wouldn't have gone down, right? And then you have the net spring force, which is up. Just understand if you draw the one arrow, you have to recognize that it's coming from two springs. You could have just as easily drawn FS1 and FS2 here. It really means the same thing. Okay, C, now we want to derive an expression for delta Y in terms of K, M, L, I, blah, 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 all these constants. Everything needs to match the fundamentals and the constants, which remember, AP loves to do this. They love to have you take an equation, put it in a certain format, and then replace variables with given variables. If the variable you have in your final equation does not is not on this list or is not a fundamental constant, you're doing it wrong. So let's go ahead here and let's actually apply Newton's second law and do a dynamic setup to try to figure out my final equation. From that, I know my net force is in equilibrium. I know the rod is not accelerating any which way, so the net force needs to be zero. Now, technically, that net force is that upward spring force minus the weight minus the magnetic force. But check it out. I want to look at the, uh, the um, list here, and I'm looking at delta y. Or how much it changed. Now, if you look in the beginning, the rod was in equilibrium. The spring force must have equaled the weight. Here, the only additional force added was the magnetic force. So this whole concept of Fs equaling mg is still true, which means that additional spring force, F equals k delta x, or in this example, delta y, well that should be a delta, whatever, k delta y, that additional force is really what I'm looking at, and that additional force needs to equal the only other downward force. So while this isn't wrong, it might send you in the wrong direction. What I'd rather say is my net force is still zero, but now that's going to come from the additional spring force, or maybe my delta fs is a good way of writing it, minus the new magnetic force, or ultimately, um, your K delta Y needs to equal the magnetic force, which is I L B, which you would also multiply by maybe sine theta or cos theta, depending on the orientation here, but it's, it's in perfect orientation. They're all perpendicular to each other. So ultimately, my final answer, oh, and by the way, how many springs do I have here? I have two, so I do need to say 2K delta Y is I L B, or uh, delta Y is going to be ILB divided by 2K. And that is my answer uh, for part C. 
Now, D says, we've got experimental data we're going to look at. We've got all this, the current and the distance, you know, as we increase the current, the distance drops, increase current distance drop more and more and more. And we want to plot delta y as a function of current. And, you know, we got to label the axes with variables, units, and scale. And we got to draw a best fit line. This entire part usually is worth like three or four points. So take your time here. Really be careful about everything. You know, it says y as a function of i. So that means my delta y needs to be over here. And my current needs to be down here. You're going to need to include your units as well. Um, before I do that, I want to look at my numbers. We could write out like 0, 0.00 this, 0, 0.00 that, or point, but that's going to be ugly. I encourage you to turn this to scientific notation. I say instead of 0 0.0028, we're going to say 2.8 times 10 to the negative 3. 5 times 10 to the negative 3, all the way down the line. So this last one is 14 times 10 to the negative 3. Then that'll let me plot 0 through 14, or actually probably 15 appropriately. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say this is 0. I'm going to say this is 5. This is 10. And then this is 15. So over here where I've got my delta y, I should include in parentheses that these values are really times 10 to the negative 3. And then I'm going to say meters for my units. So it's 10 to the negative 3 meters. So this is 5 times 10 to the negative 3 meters all the way down the line. My amps, my current is a little different. It's nice and easy, nice whole numbers, and there's only five of them. So I'm going to go ahead and plot 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, which means my units that I'm going to have is going to be amps. I'm going to go 1, uh, 2, 3, 4, and then 5 amps. Now you could have slightly different here, but this seems like it's going to be the cleanest. And then now I need to go and plot. I'm going to pause this so I can just plot it and then unpause it. That way it happens nice and instantaneously. Okay, I've got my plots pointed. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and do my best fit line. And uh, Remember, a best fit line is either going to be a curve or a straight line that's encompassing more or less the average of your data points. Please, 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 please do not just connect the dots and make this jumpy look. That's not what we're looking for at all. Please don't use freehand. Use a ruler that's provided. I'm going to go ahead and just use my computer tool because I get a straight line here. And I'm going to see here, well, I also got to kind of think about this. When there's zero current, will it stretch at all? No. So I can, and you don't have to, but I can start at the origin. And again, try to encompass more or less the average. I like to think of it as I have the same number of dots above that line as I do below that line. And it looks pretty legit to me. Everyone's going to have a slightly different best fit line. No problem. Did you need to start the origin? Nope, you did not. You could you could have ended at this data point. That's fine. All right, this whole thing uh, is all set. D is there. Now E is where it's going to get really challenging. That's where we're going to really test the ability for you to do uh, your graphing physics or your math, I should say. And we're going to use this, and I'll read it carefully, using the straight line you drew, we need to calculate the value B for the magnetic field if we know the mass, the length, and this constant. Now, in order to explain this, I'm going to carry over the equation that they had us derive in C. Y equals ILB over 2K. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down. Delta Y equals ILB over 2K. Now look at this. I have delta Y plotted here, and I have I plotted here. If I divide my I over, delta Y over I, I'm looking at my slope, right? Change in Y over X, or my rise over my run. So this is my slope. Well, that slope, therefore, must equal LB over 2K. Now, the reason I'm doing this is it says using the straight line you drew. Ultimately, the really, the clearest way you can do this is by calculating the slope of that line. Well, the slope of that line will not equal B. However, B will equal the slope of the line times 2K over L. You see this? So let's find slope first. Slope is going to be rise over run. So it's going to be your change in y over your, you can write change in x or your change in i. Rise over your run. In this case, this case delta y is your rise. And you got to pick points that are on your line that's drawn. Okay, so maybe I'll pick this point. That looks like a nice clean point. 
It's going to be easy for me to find that data. And I don't know. I'll just jump ahead until I find another clean spot. That looks like a pretty clean spot right here. Now everyone's going to get slightly different values. But I'm going to look at my change in Y over my change in X for these lo this location. So I'm going from 5 to 10. So I have a change of 5 times 10 to the negative 3 meters over a run. Well, each tick is counting as 0.2. So I'm really going from 1.8 to 3.246. So 3.6 minus 1.8. Well, that's going to be 1.8, right? Let me go ahead and calculate this, and I will be right back. All right, I'm calculating a slope of right around 2.8. I had to round a little bit times 10 to the negative 3, and it's going to be meters per amp. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this in here to determine my magnetic field. So it's going to be 2.8 times 10 to the negative 3 times 2 times k, uh, which I do not recall off the top of my head, so i got to look that one up on the front page. One sec. I'm losing my mind. I'm not looking at the, top, the front of the page. This is the spring constant k, not Boltzmann's constant. Crazy, crazy, crazy. So spring constant K, and we must have this somewhere already, right? Uh, reading here, it would be simple to just read the paragraph given. Sorry, 25 newtons per meter. See, even, even teachers and physics folks screw up simple reading comprehension. comprehension. And we're going to divide that by the length. So that's the 0.35. You should be putting meters in or units in everywhere. I'm getting lazy. Please don't get lazy. Uh, you do some magic here. I'm going to go ahead and calculate some stuff. So I'll be right All right, I'm getting a value of when rounded 0 0.4 in its magnetic field, so Tesla. Uh, I do need to caution you. I did not type in my rounded version. I just saved that number in my calculator and use the more accurate number here, I encourage you to do the same thing. But that is your final answer. Uh, and again, if you don't use your line, you're not going to get full credit here, okay? So please make sure you're using your actual data. For example, some of you might get, say, 0.45 for your answer because your slope is a little different than mine. Thank you.